Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome back to another chat with Matt. Now, if like me, you're on LinkedIn a fair bit, and if like me, you get a fair amount of traffic coming into your LinkedIn inbox of people wanting to talk to you or they've got the, the, the latest and greatest new idea, I would imagine sometimes that can be a little bit tedious. Maybe you're one of the people who are actually sending the information out and through, through the greatest of will, don't always get the best results. Well, on today's chat, we've got an expert. We've got one of our own, a friend and colleague, uh, Louis is gonna talk to us about the best practices of LinkedIn and social selling. We always start here, Louis, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, Matt. Pleasure to be here, mate, so yeah. Good, looking forward to your insights, actually, for, for uh, this chat today. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to actually be able to share what I've got in my head and hopefully someone will listen to it, so yeah. Well, they will, there's no doubt about that. It's whether that's they the choose difference. to do anything with it, that's the different thing. That's the big difference. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start with this, and, 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 and a really direct question. You also get a lot of, of, of income and traffic into your LinkedIn inbox. What really winds you up if you think about things that you receive, knowing that you know about this stuff? What winds you up? I, I am just not keen on messages that are not personalized. So um, I'll let you into a little bit of an insight. On my LinkedIn profile, uh, as my name, you'll see that it says Llewellyn Louis Watkins. Yeah. There's a reason why I've done that. Rather than just call myself Louis Watkins, which is what everyone knows me as, I put Llewellyn Louis in my first name. And I can tell straight off when someone sends me, for example, an automated message, because it will say, hi, Llewellyn Louis. So that instantly rings alarm bells to me um, when it comes to receiving messages, but also messages where it's absolutely nothing to do with my areas of interest and expertise either. You know, I have people reaching out to me asking me if I am interested in, um, you know, joining them to do website design. Um, I've never in my life done website design uh, and it perplexes me as to why people would outreach that way when everything is on my LinkedIn profile as it should be. So, so yeah, that's just a, one of the things in personalization is definitely something that grinds my gears, I'd say. But, but that's something in sales all over. Yeah. Uh, you know, you wouldn't walk, walk in to see a, a sales director and say, well, actually, let's talk a little bit about your your cash flow forecast. Um, some sales directors might be interested from that from a budgeting perspective, but you've got to personalize it. You've got to make it relevant to the people. And actually, it's sometimes a bit lazy, isn't it? If you send something out and you haven't done a little bit of filtering and due diligence, is, is it just lazy or is that just my interpretation of that? I think there's there's a, an element of laziness to it. And I mean, look, you and I are both salespeople, right? So there's, there's certainly experience, I think, coming into play here when we answer this, when we think about laziness, because you or I are probably guilty of it. Um, I think a lot of it, especially in the times that we're in at the moment, is, is desperation, I think, to be honest with you. The hope that this whole concept of spray and pray, you know, sending out masses of messages, not thinking about the audience that you're going to in the hope that maybe just one person will reply and say, yeah, I'll buy whatever it is that you're offering. I think that's the mentality that we see more often than not. And I think that's the reason for it. So, yeah, absolutely. Laziness is an element within there. But I think the bigger picture overall is just this whole idea that I need to do this. I need to do it now. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I just send the same message over and over and over and over again, and hopefully someone will buy. So that's my ideas around it. Which is a spray and pray. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, it's it's indifferent from email. It's indifferent from cold calling, you know, where you're smashing out 150 calls a day in the hope that someone might just give you that 30 seconds for you to be able to do your value proposition. Uh, and then maybe even you know, take a demo or, you know, do do um, some some testing or, or get involved with a proof of concept, what have you. Um, the same goes for LinkedIn. You know, it's just another communication tool for a lot of people. But as we know, it isn't. It's not just a communication tool. It's not just a, a chance for you to use another variant of email. It's so much more than that in terms of relationship building and so on. So, yeah. so let's let's go down that path now. We we've talked about what grinds your gears. Yep. A lack of personalization, irrelevance. What works? So if you're if you're someone who's considering doing social selling or, or increasing your networking on LinkedIn, as, as many people are, what are some of those best practices as you see it? Yeah, so so firstly, um, and probably the biggest one is knowing your audience. 
at the end of the day. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean, it's, it's quite simple. If you are selling a particular product, you need to ensure that the audience that you're trying to sell to actually sits on LinkedIn. Uh, I know that seems a bit strange to say, but a lot of organizations out there, especially in the uh, B2C space, will use LinkedIn to try and market products and so on and, and use social selling to, to go to market when actually the realization is that they very quickly learn that the people that they're trying to target actually are better off on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. So first and foremost, you need to know your audience. Secondly, you need to use the tools that you're given um, in order to find the people that are going to be of interest. You know, you think about LinkedIn Premium, you think about Sales Navigator, but even just standard LinkedIn offers some tools that allow you to hone in on, on the kinds of people that you're interested in. So, so that absolutely, you know, research, research is key. You know, I, I've done it many times myself. Some people might say to me, yeah, but the, the payoff for the amount of time that you take to research an organization, research an individual and so on, might not actually prove beneficial if they turn around and say no. But the fact is, if I turn around and I've done my research and I've reached out to someone and they say to me, uh, now's not the right time. Well, there will be a right time. So I haven't burnt any bridges. Right. So so research is, is a fundamental and also presence. Lastly, um, presence is so significant. You know, having a good profile, having a good profile picture so people can see what you look like, but also sharing your thoughts, sharing your opinions, interacting with other people. That's significant. And I think quite often what people don't realize is when you add those three things together, you exponentially increase the likelihood that you're going to get a conversation off of the back of a message that you send. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, people try and use it as a silver bullet. They try and use it as a as a, a kind of a magic wand. And the unfortunate thing is, is it's just like cold calling and it's just like spam emailing. You know, if you if you apply the same principles, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, so certainly it's, it's, yeah, an area of those three things are the things that you should be doing when it comes to your approach on LinkedIn. Um, okay. And, wh and when done well then, Louis, so where you've seen examples, maybe yourself or others have done it well, what, what can you expect? Well, significant increase in, in opportunities to not just have a conversation, but also actively engage in commercial conversations as well you know, from a from a, a product perspective and so on. Uh, also, if you think about, you know, we're focusing there on on new business, right? but when you think about existing business, when you have a presence and you understand how to network and intertwine into that network, uh, you can also see an increase in the opportunity to upsell and cross sell with existing customers. If you have the right relationships with those individuals on social, you can then take that relationship and move it into other people within the same organization that might have different interests and have a conversation with those people and again it's about reputation it's about presence um, and having that that kind of um, research and ability to know exactly who you're talking to that's really going to increase the likelihood that you have those conversations so it's a, it's, a, it's not just applicable to new business but it's also applicable to existing business and existing customers as well so you can see massive increases. I've seen some fantastic wins um, over the years that I've been involved in this. I'm coming up at about eight years I've been doing this specifically. Um, and, you know, we're talking about something that's applicable, not just the small business, but also applicable to enterprise. And, you know, the, the, the opportunities that you see come off of the back of using social as a addition to calling and email and so on is incredible. Um, quicker renewals, more new business and actually to be honest with you having that presence equals happier customers uh, i know that sounds very cliche but genuinely that's what i've seen quite frequently in the past which is you know all positive outcomes that anybody would want to go for so let's let's let, as we get towards the end of our chat let's let's give that i know you said earlier there is no silver bullet but if there was if there was if you were starting from a position of not being particularly good at social <laughs> selling you always have to start somewhere first yeah what's your What's your recommendation for do this first before you do anything else? Make sure that you have a profile, a LinkedIn profile that talks to the audience that you're going after. That is the, that is the simplest and easiest thing to get you started on this journey. Because once you understand 
the value that you bring to a conversation by creating a LinkedIn profile that talks to the people that you're trying to sell into, that will give you so much more confidence to then be able to do all the other things that enable uh, social selling to play a significant role in your in your sales strategy and process. Um, when you have a LinkedIn profile that talks about what you do, not what the business does, but what you do to help people understand when you create that familiarity, then the the it almost becomes second nature to share your thoughts, share your ideas through posts, and then gives you the confidence to be able to network, send connection requests, send in mails if you want to use in mails or, or send messages to existing uh, contacts of yours. So absolutely and fundamentally, LinkedIn profile is number one. Number one. Start absolutely. with yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about yourself first. And that might sound selfish to some, but actually it's amazing. I've worked with so many people on their LinkedIn profiles um, and people that come in to my sessions or the one to one sessions with me will say, oh, I'm only this. Well, actually, you know, you're not just only this. You are integral in the process at whatever point you might sit within that process. So let's look into that more. And when you see that light switch on, you see a complete change in, in the way that they view the purpose of social media. Then. And then you see that increase in sharing and connecting and, and actually using LinkedIn for what it is for. And that is for networking. So, yeah. Good tips. And when you're not busy doing social selling, what keeps you busy outside of work, Louis? Uh, be my wife and my kids. I've got two babies, a two and a half year old and a one and a half year old uh, boy and girl. And, uh, and my love of rugby and mountain biking as well. Oh, yeah. oh, very good. Very good. Okay. Well, if you're listening and, and watching this, if you think just take a, you know, a, a look at your LinkedIn profile, is it everything that Louis has been describing? Have, as you're going out to the market, are you considering your marketplace? Are you considering your customer? What's your marginal gain? What one thing will you do differently as a result of, of the expertise Louis has given on this, this chat in order to help you be more successful in future? It's worth thinking about, even if just for a minute. Louis, it's a pleasure having you on Chat with Matt. Matt, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking with you, mate. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Look after yourself and your family, mate. And, and for everybody listening and watching, stay safe. And we'll see you soon on another Chat with Matt. Thank you. Cheers, cheers everyone. Thank you.